welcome. Come along for a journey in unstoppable truth of the Word of God. We are studying the book of Revelation right now. We have been studying five mysteries of the New Testament, which are themes in the book of Revelation. We have studied the letters to the three churches that John wrote when he was on the island of Patmos. We have studied the, the first four seals being broken, uh, called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And we've studied through those. We're just paying attention to Scripture. I'm just quoting Scripture to you. And we're going to stop occasionally and pay attention to some details along the way. But this book is a book that we are commanded to memorize. We are commanded to lay it to our heart and know it. And so our job is to just break it down into bite-sized pieces so that our brains will remember it. When you do an outline and just take small little snippets of, of all of this word, um, you'll really begin to see it and break it down and understand it and remember it and lay it to your heart. So let's begin. We stopped off at the fourth seal being opened, and it was the final horse. Now we're going to open the fifth seal, and this is what it says. When the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw at the foot of the altar the souls of those who had lived and been sacrificed for uh, adhering to the Word of God and for their testimony that they had borne. These are Christians, these are saints, these are believers in Christ who died for what they uh, believed over the last 2,000 years. They cried out in a loud voice, O oh, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long now before you will sit in judgment and avenge our blood upon those who dwell on the earth? When are you going to avenge our blood? When are you going to finally punish the murderers of, of the saints, the murderers and the, the people who were vile against us and sinful against us? When are you going to avenge our blood? And then um, God the Father said, uh, uh, he said, Then they were each given a long robe, um, and it was a white robe, and they were told to rest and wait patiently a little while longer until the number that should be complete of their fellow servants, their brethren, who were to be killed as they too had been killed. So there's even a number that God has of people who are going to be martyred. And these martyrs up in heaven are told to wait until the full number of the martyrs come in. Let's keep track here. That's the third time saints are mentioned. And the third time that it's talking about martyrs of the, the faith in Jesus Christ. And it's waiting for the fullness of those people of Jesus Christ to be martyred and come in. Um, that's another mention of the saints in the book of Revelation. Chapter 6, verse 12. When he, the Lamb, broke open the sixth seal, I looked, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun grew black as the black of the sackcloth of hair. And the stars of the sky dropped to the earth like a fig tree shedding its unripe fruit in the shaking of a wind. And the sky rolled up like a scroll and vanished. Every mountain and island dislodged from its place. Um, it's really interesting about these islands and mountains shaking. Did you remember that that earthquake at uh, Mount Everest in Nepal? Mount Everest shrank by an inch uh, from that earthquake, but it's not totally dislodged yet, but it moved, which is an incredible thing to me. I've also seen a video of uh, some people uh, sailing across the ocean, and they took pictures, a video, of an island being born. And it literally was just born in minutes. Um, off the coast of, of Thailand, right after the tsunami had happened and that earthquake had happened, they were all marveling on the beach. Because they used to look at the ocean and a solid sea of ocean. Now they were looking at a huge island. And it was birthed in just hours during that tsunami that took place. Then the kings of the earth and their noblemen and their magnates and their military chiefs and the wealthy and the strong and the slave and the free hid themselves in caves and, um, and, and among the rocks and the mountains. And they called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, from his deep-seated indignation and wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand before it? 
Now, many people believe that this is the wrath of God that is coming in to the book of Revelation right now, that this is the expression of the wrath of God and that we're not appointed to anything else beyond this, this point. And I disagree with that because we have to keep in context who's the audience and who is the speaker, who is actually speaking these words that the wrath of God has come. It's just scared men, scared kings, scared military men, scared guys hiding in the mountains declaring, oh, this is the wrath of God. That isn't the wrath of God yet. If you think that's bad, it gets a lot worse. And the wrath of God doesn't happen until the bowls of the wrath of God. But this is just scared men declaring it's the wrath, and it's not yet. Um, but obviously they have a lot of fear, and they are certainly feeling um, uh, terrified uh, at what is going on by this great earthquake and shaking. After that, I saw four angels stationed at the four corners of the earth, firmly holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind should blow on the earth or the sea or the tree. Now, can you imagine going outside and not having any wind? Nothing moves. Then I saw a second angel coming up from the east and carrying a seal of the living God, and with a loud voice he called out to the four angels that had been given power and authority not to injure the sea and the earth. So these angels were commanded not to harm and injure the sea or the earth until um, the, they sealed the servants and the bond servants uh, on their foreheads by God. So they were waiting for this sealing of God's people. And God's people will be sealed on their forehead. It's not something that you will be able to see visually, um, but it is something that happens in the spirit. And you are marked by God. And the angels aren't allowed to hurt the earth until this takes place. Now, in this sixth trumpet, it's really interesting because there is an interlude or, or maybe an angelic explanation or an expounding. It's kind of a long seal. And we're getting into Revelation chapter 7, verse 4 now. And we're going to see um, that he is also going to mark 12, uh, 12 tribes of 12,000. So 12 times 12,000 is the 144,000. Let's read uh, chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard many were sealed out of every tribe, and the sons of Israel were 144,000. I believe that these are literally of the tribes of Israel. Um, and then it tells you 12,000 of each tribe. After this, I looked, and there was a vast host, which no one could count or gather out of every nation, tribe, people's languages. And these stood before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were attired in white robes with palm branches in their hands. In a loud voice they cried out, Salvation is due to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. To them we owe our deliverance. So we see that even after the sealing of the 144,000, there is a vast host worshiping God. And they are worshiping the Lamb who paid the price and delivered them. Who would that be, Christians? That would be the Christians. And again, we have our fourth mention of the saints right there, that they are worshiping the Lamb. Now, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders uh, and the four living creatures, and they fell prostrated before the throne and worshiped God. Amen, they cried, blessing, glory, majesty, splendor, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, might, to our God, to the ages of ages, amen. As they began to worship, everybody in heaven begins to worship. Anytime worship is expressed, all of heaven goes into worship. Then the one that was addressing me, or John, one of the elders, he said, Who are these people clothed in these long white robes? Where have they come from? John responds to this elder and says, Sir, you know. And the elder said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've come out of persecution. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So now you're seeing a sea of martyrs who have come out of the great tribulation. There's number five. The saints are still here. They are martyred, and there's a vast host, a vast sea of them. We have not seen a rapture yet. We have not seen the resurrection of the dead yet. For this reason, they are now before the very throne of God and serve him day and night in his sanctuary. 
And he who is sitting upon the throne will, per, will protect and spread his tabernacle and shelter them. There will be no more tears, no more crying. They won't be scorched. They won't be hungry or thirsty. They will have a shelter. The scorching heat won't burn them. The lamb who is in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the rivers of living water, and he will wipe away every tear from their eye. You can trace that tear in your eye even to Old Testament prophecies as well. When it talks about the tear in their eye, it's talking about this, this, this part of the scripture. Guess what? Number six, the saints are still around. He's seeing the saints. When the Lamb broke open the seventh seal, there was a silence for about a half an hour in heaven. And this silence um, uh, was for a half an hour. And the first thing that John experiences and sees after this silence were the seven angels standing with the seven trumpets. So the first seal is the seven trumpets. You have to get through all seven trumpets before you get to the end of the seventh seal. So there was the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal, the fifth seal, the sixth seal. The seventh seal is the seven trumpets. And when we get to the end of the seven trumpets, you're going to begin to see this scroll declared from heaven. And heaven will announce when the wrath of God is about to take place. I have a movie that I would like to encourage you to see. It's free. You can get it on YouTube. Um, it's called The Apocalypse. And it's about John on the island of Patmos receiving these visions of the book of Revelation. And... I believe that they did a wonderful job adhering very closely to Scripture and really reenacting and giving the image, imagery of what John saw in, in, in the book of Revelation. And so if this is all very mysterious to you and, and not quite clear to you, that movie may really help. You can get it for free on YouTube, and the movie is called The Apocalypse, and it is about the Apostle John and his revelation. So after this last seal was opened, the seven trumpets are seen. So the seventh seal equals the seven trumpets. Verse 3, And another angel came and stood before the altar, and he had a golden censer. And he was given very much incense, fragrance, spices, perfumes that were to be burned, that he might mingle this incense with the prayers of the saints, all of the people of God, the saints, in the golden altar before the throne. Remember a, few, a little while ago we saw that the prayers of the saints were going to be mixed and mingled with incense. Well, now we're going to see what happens to the prayers of the saints. Guess what? The saints are still here praying prayers. And they're still lifting up these prayers and they're being mixed with the incense of heaven. And the smoke of the incense, the perfume, rose in the presence of God. It came up before the nostrils of God, and he could, it, he could partake of the incense of the prayers of the saints. And from the hand of the angel, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar, and he cast it back down to the earth. Now, what is he doing? He's taking the prayers of the saints and the incense. He goes to the altar, and he grabs some fire, he mixes it with the incense, and he throws that fire back down to the earth. And when this fire comes back down to the earth, there were loud uh, peals of thunder, loud rumblings, blasts, noises, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. And this fire that comes down out of heaven will um, literally uh, be all of the prayers of the saints being answered. The prayers of the saints are going up, mixed with the incense, blended with the fire, and that angel throws that fire back down. Now we're going to talk about this fire in just a second. But just understand that we're now up to number seven of the saints being mentioned. We're keeping track of how many there are. I believe at the end of the age, 
there is gonna, the saints will have the same fire from heaven like Elijah had. Remember when Elijah called down fire from heaven and the, it burned up all the false prophets? I believe that this, the Christians and the saints will walk in this fire as well. In fact, many of you in your churches, you have seen visible fire like manifest. Now, I want to talk about fire for just a little bit. We're going to see in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation that the false prophet is going to be able to call down fire from heaven as well. He will be able to counterfeit the fire. Doesn't mean that we need to be afraid of the fire. It just means to let you know that the enemy will be able to counterfeit it and have the same sign and wonder happen as well. Now, about this fire, I believe that... Um, a hundred years ago, roughly around uh, 1909, 1913, um, and then it lasted till about 1931, there was something called the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles, California. And an African-American man who had one eye became the pastor of a revival of the first um, non-segregated church. That means anybody who of any skin color was welcome at his church. He had black people, Asian people, white people. Truth be told, that's what heaven's going to look like. So get used to uh, people that are of different colors and different nationalities and races because if you can't stand it down here, you're not going to be able to stand heaven. You're going to see people from every race, tribe, nation, and language. And it's going to be a beautiful thing to see all of these people gathered together. Well, as these saints got together and prayed, the fire of God would come. And literally, the fire department would be called multiple times because onlookers or passerbyers going by their building could see fire coming out of the building. They would show up and they would just find a whole bunch of saints having wild miracles taking place. All the prayers of the saints were taking place. People that, that didn't have an arm, the arm would grow out. A woman had a nose that looked like a witch's nose, and she couldn't stand her nose, and they prayed, and she got a new nose. She didn't like the new nose, so they prayed again, and she got a different nose, and she really liked that one. But, I mean, just really intense personal prayers, uh, miraculous signs and wonders and healings that Jesus walked in is what happened at Azusa about 100 years ago. I believe uh, at Azusa, the pastor was William Seymour, and there was another man that was from the Azusa Revival on the East Coast, and that would be Brother Pastor Purim. And they both prophesied the exact same thing on the exact same day. They said in roughly 100 years, the same outpouring of fire that happened at Azusa Street that will be poured out on not just one church, but it will be poured out on anybody who wants it. It will be poured out all around the globe, all around the earth. And you could be in your home, you could be at a church, you could be anywhere, and you could get this fire from heaven. Now, this fire from heaven is going to, um, to uh, answer all of the prayers of the saints. Now, I know of a wonderful testimony of a lady named Dr. Robin Harfouche. And she was um, abused as a little girl. And because of that, she would be able to um, leave and go play at a playground while terrible things were happening to her body as a little girl. Because of that ability, she got mixed up into the New Age movement and really got scared um, at the things that they were doing and participating in. She went into the Presbyterian Church in Hollywood and got saved, healed, and delivered miraculously. And God changed her life. She married a Pentecostal preacher, and um, her life really began to turn around. One day, they were praying in their bedroom, and her husband put his hand on her belly, and the room filled with smoke. And this lady went to heaven and had an encounter with Jesus in heaven. And the whole time she was in heaven, she didn't say a word. She only, uh, but on earth, her mouth was telling everything that she was seeing. So her husband wrote down everything that she said, and it was like 19 pages long. And um, her husband uh, told her, by the way, uh, to not, not read the prophets or the book of Revelation. So as she's having this encounter with Jesus in heaven, she's experiencing the worship. As Jesus had her by the hand and was walking down some of the streets in heaven, the people were just screaming and yelling and roaring. And it, she said it sounded like a million voices and a million instruments. She said it was intense and crazy and beautiful. Then Jesus took her to another place and showed her what the, the end-time church was going to look like. 
They were going to have the hospitals were going to be poured out onto the floors of the stadiums. And then um, as the saints made the same sound as the saints in heaven, that fire would come up out of the stadiums and fire would come down out of the heaven and all of the prayers of the saints would be healed. There would be mounds of eyeglasses and crutches and wheelchairs and IV bottles and oxygen tanks that everything was going to be answered. Now, these people aren't going to the stadiums to see a Jesus. They are going to these stadiums to worship Jesus with a loud roar. Hundreds of thousands of people will be on the outside of these stadiums trying to crush and get into the stadiums. But it was going to be, um, that's what God showed her what it was going to look like in the last of the last days. I believe that this fire is coming back. I believe that, that the prophecy from Azusa Street is going to happen. I, th I already have a friend right now who is moving in the fire. They are seeing physical fire uh, manifest at some of his meetings. And, and answers to prayer are just coming uh, like a flood. And it is very, very exciting. By the way, pray big prayers. The heaven's gates are opening. Heaven is coming open. Pray big prayers. Let your faith go as big as you want to let it go. Pray the prayers. Pray difficult prayers. Things that you wish would happen, but you've never seen it happen before. Go for it. Try it out. See if it's going to work for you. Just pray big prayers. Pray big prayers out loud or pray big prayers not out loud. It is very important. I read a book called God's Generals, and it was about the saints of God who made it across the finish line and the saints of God who didn't, uh, and they felt like they had failed. And Brother Seymour felt like he had failed because the fire had ended after three and a half years. And they still had revival. They still saw awesome and wonderful things, but it wasn't like that when they had the fire. And he felt like a failure, truth be told. I don't think he was a failure. And in the next class, we are going to understand why William Seymour was not a failure, but God had to shut down the fire 100 years ago. The fire was being fulfilled here at, Re at Revelation 8, verses 1 through 3, 4, and 5. But we are going to see why the timing and what the timing is to this. Um, <clears throat> remember, before we head into next week, a nation was going to be born in a day, and it was going to be it was going to happen in a moment. Now that was Israel. Now keep in context that the two wars, World War One and World War Two, is what birthed the nation of Israel. We are going to see how these trumpets were fulfilled already, and they are coming to pass even as we speak next week. And the first trumpet is. Um, is really exciting. We've already seen the seal broken. We see what happened when the seal was broken. He saw the seven trumpets. There was silence, the seven trumpets. Then we saw the fire um, coming down out of heaven. Pray big prayers. Don't be afraid of the fire. Don't go after the counterfeit fire. And know that God loves you. He is going to be with you. And, um, and let your faith and your love just expand and grow during this exciting season of the harvest of the earth. Share Jesus with somebody this week. I love you. I thank you and I, for joining me for the unstoppable truth of the book of Revelation. God bless you. This is Camille Farrow. Bye-bye.